So we'll probably only have time to do a few uh, examples here. So we're going to look at the width of a river. So a surveyor can measure the width of a river. by setting up a transit. At point A, directly across the river from point B. And she walks to point C, which is perpendicular to the line containing A and B. So we'll write the line AB is just AB with a line over the top. And, oh, she also know how far. Oh, I left out the verb. She walks. She walks to point C. Uh, and I have to say how far she walks, which is square root 300 meters. And she measures the angle from A to C as 30 meters, uh, 30 degrees. She so measures the angle from A to C. As 30 degrees, how wide is the river? All right, so we get to draw a picture. We're going to draw a river. So your river, we know rivers are perfectly straight. So this river will be perfectly straight. And <clears throat> we want to know how wide it is. So in this case, it'll look like a height. I could have drawn a north-south river, and then we'd look at the width. But let's start labeling points. So we got A and B are directly across the river from each other. So I'll just put A at the top and B at the bottom. But the important part is they're directly across from each other. And then it says, so she just finished setting up A, and then she walks to point C, which is perpendicular to the line AB. So if I draw a line AB, perpendicular means walking across the riverbank on the side with A. Doesn't matter which way she walks, but we do need to pay attention to how far she's walking. So that'll be point C, and we know the distance right here is square root 300 meters. So we know that distance, and she measures the angle from A to C. Uh oh. What's that? That's a good question. Depends on when, like if she put A first and B second. I, the way I wrote the story, that's not very clear. So let's call the angle ACB or BCA. So that will make more sense. So we'll call the angle ACB. So that's the geometry notation that you may have seen in high school. You put a 
but it's supposed to represent an angle in front of that. And then basically C is the vertex of your angle. So here's ACB. We're going to look at this. So that angle is 30 degrees right there. So any questions on setting up the points or the measurement? Any questions on setting up the points or the measurement? All right, how wide is the river? So we need to measure this triangle. So we could redraw the triangle right down here, just a little bit bigger, 30 degrees, square root 300. So what side, if I called this x and h, which side am I actually looking for? So we're going to measure the width as x. So we're looking for x, so let's forget about h. We don't really need it on this problem. So how do I figure out x? So what trig function relates 30 degrees, square root 300, and x? So we got our hypotenuse is missing. So that narrows it down to tangent or cotangent. So we'll use tangent. 30 equals opposite over adjacent. And tangent of 30 degrees is 1 over square root 3. Our opposite is x, and our adjacent is square root 300. So we can cross multiply. And divide by square root 3. And of course, square root 300 is square root 3 times square root 100. So we can factor that out, cancel that, and square root 100 is 10. And we measured in meters, so that's 10 meters. So this problem's a little unrealistic because rivers are not totally straight, so you're, well, unless you're in Los Angeles and they're paved with concrete, like the Terminator movie, but. Huh? Like, yeah, it's, they're rivers. Yeah, they're paved with concrete, so they're not very fish, fish friendly. All right, so we got our width of a river. We have time to do one more problem, and it's also the last problem in the section. So we're going to look at a statue on top of a building, or it could really could be anything on top of a building that you want to measure. You're standing 50 feet from a building. And we have to say how high above the ground the, your eyes are. So we'll just make it easy and say your eyes are five feet above the ground. When looking at the top of the building, you are looking 45 degrees above the horizon. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to use basically the angle you're looking up combined with the distance the building is away. Yeah. No. All right, so we are looking um, above the horizon at 30, 45 degrees. Is 
there is a statue on top of the building. And when looking at the top of the statue, you're looking 60 degrees above the horizon. How tall is the building and how tall is the statue? So if you ever do this measurement, a uh, measurement like this by using the angle you're looking up, if you just use 45 degrees as the angle, you know the distance you are away is the same as the height. So that can be an easy way to measure, yeah. That's actually crazy. Like you could just an isosceles triangle. Like That's not an isosceles triangle, but. Yep. Just keep walking backwards until you get to 45 degrees. Exactly. So you're looking up. So that'll be part of this problem, but there's going to be two parts on this. So let's go and draw out the situation. So we're 50 feet away from a building, so that's the ground. We'll put a building right here. And we're 50 feet away. And when we look at the top of the building, you're looking at 45 degrees above the horizon. So there should be a 45 degree angle right there. We're 50 feet from the building. Oh, there's one thing I did not account for. So I'll draw a statue at the top of the building with 60 degrees. So that bigger angle is supposed to be 60 degrees. And I'll draw a really bad statue, something like that. All right. What my picture is not accounting for is the fact that your eyes are not directly on the ground. So to really do this accurately, you either need to put your head right next to the ground or you need to account for how high your eyes are above the ground. So there's an extra five feet down here that account for the distance your eyes are above the ground. So that height is five right there. So you're basically counting from five feet above the ground on upwards. So when I say how tall the building is, it's going to be this distance that we measure here plus the five that you started with. Did I not explain that well? Yeah, so you're going to count how far above the build your eyes the top of the building is. So you got another five feet that you have to count. All right, how tall is the building? We don't have to use much trig, we can use geometry. We got a nice uh, isosceles triangle. So how tall is the building? So yeah, the building would be 50, and then you got the extra five at the bottom. So you got, uh, that's from the fact this is a 45 degree triangle, 45, 45, so your two sides are the same. So we got that side is 50. We have the five that's, I can't really label it. I'll squeeze the five right down there. There's that five right there. So our building is 55 feet tall. How do I figure the height of the statue out? So I'll use some blue marker here to measure some distances. So I know this height is 50 right here. I want to know the height right there. So we're going to look at one triangle, which is this big triangle here. That'll give me the total height of basically the building plus the statue. And then I'll just take away the, stat the building height to get the statue height. 
we're going to redraw that triangle 60 degrees 50 feet so figure out the height y right there so use trigonometry we are not dealing with hypotenuse here so sine and cosine are out so you're going to be using tangent here so figure out y So you should get the total height is 50 times square root 3. And from here, all we have to do is basically take away 50 and we'll have the height of the statue. And there's not too much you can do here. Oh, I got that wrong. 50 square root 3 minus 50. So I kind of excluded that from the second calculation because uh, I took the building height of 50, not 55. So I just, on the second one, I knew I didn't really care about the actual height to the ground, basically.